Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio, Mystery, Suspense, Dramas, and Horrors, where we bring to you the most mysterious tales that the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with over 167 episodes broadcast on NBC Radio from 1949 to 1953, we bring to you Dangerous Assignment. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Morning, Commissioner. Morning, Steve. I was a flight back from Switzerland. Smooth as silk. Just got in. Glad you liked it, because you're taking the next plane for Cairo. Cairo? You mean today? <laughs> Look, I don't even have a clean shirt left. You can dunk it in the Nile when you get there. Oh, Ruth. Yes, Commissioner. How are you doing on Steve's plane ticket? I was able to get him space on the next plane. Takes off in an hour. Good. Oh, great. I haven't had a date for a week, and now you want to fix me up with a mummy. Steve... Remember Sheik Haroon? Sure, he's an old friend of mine. He should be. What do you mean? About five years ago, I taught him to play poker, and he cleaned me. <laughs> well, as you know, the Sheik controls a territory on the edge of the Sahara. He has a walled city there. Yeah, I was there once. Quite a joint. Uh, we think there's uranium ore in his territory. Oh. You don't think the Sheik's making himself an A-bomb, do you? No, but we do know that six months ago, we concluded an agreement permitting representatives of several countries to explore and develop the area. That agreement expires next Wednesday, and the sheik has suddenly refused to renew it or even see our representatives. Yeah, sound like someone up the ante, huh? Yes. Apparently, these other interests have the inside track with them right now. We want you to change all that. Oh, great. Sounds like a cinch. Where is the sheik now, in his walled city? No. According to our information, he's staying on his houseboat in the Nile at Cairo right now. Steve, get to the sheik. What you say to him is up to you, but it's vital that our agreement with him be renewed. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment, Steve? Yeah, yeah, I know. Good luck. Broadcasting Company is proud to present Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, colorful, two-fisted government agent. At all those places of the world where danger and intrigue walk hand in hand, there you will find Steve Mitchell on another Dangerous Assignment. Yeah, this assignment's really a cinch. All I have to do is stick my nose into a hornet's nest of more power politics and change the whole course of events just by reminding the leader of 30,000 fanatical tribesmen that he and I used to be pals. So I slip a copy of How to Win Friends and Influence People into my suitcase and head for Cairo. It's Friday when I get there. I check in at the Delta Hotel and then I head for the Sheik's houseboat on the Nile. Stop where you are, Fendi. Huh? You cannot come aboard this boat. Who are you? One of the sheik's guards. Look, tell the sheik that Steve Mitchell is here. The sheik will see no one. Who's that guy up on the deck? That is Ahmed, the sheik's confidential secretary. Look, Ahmed. I, I warn you, do not set foot on this boat, or it will be the air guard's unpleasant duty to shoot you. Guard, guard. Oh, good afternoon, Mikal. Has the sheik changed his mind about seeing me? No, I'm afraid not, Mikal. But. Truly, he will see me. I am sorry, but I have my orders. The sheik will see no one. Now, please leave, both of you, at once. Very well. Okay, but I'll be back. I would not advise it, Effendi. Well, looks like you didn't have any better luck than I did. Uh, say, your face seems familiar. I am Mikan. I was once the chief's trusted lieutenant. I thought I recognized you. I'm Steve Mitchell. Steve Mitchell, of course. It has been a long time. Yeah. Hey, uh, what's going on, anyway? I wish I knew Mitchell. 
Up until last week, I enjoyed the sheik's complete confidence. But suddenly, everything has changed. Shake up in the tribe, huh? Now he will not even see me. Something must have turned him against me. Something or someone. I must have turned him against just about everybody. How about that secretary, Ahmed? I have been wondering about him. He's been acting strangely the last few days. I've asked him several times to get me an audience with the sheik, but he seems very evasive. I wonder if somebody's paying him to be evasive. I do not know. Look, you know the lay of the land around here a lot better than I do. Maybe you can help me. I would be glad to if I thought I could, but it is very discouraging. Yeah, but somehow I've got to see the sheik. Very well, Mitchell, I will try to help you. Meet me at the Sphinx Club at eight tonight. Perhaps I will have thought of a plan by then. I get back to my hotel just in time to see a figure that looks like Ahmed scooting through the lobby. In my room, there's a bowl of fruit on the table with a note, compliments of the management. I pick out an apple and start for the window, thinking about the whole deal. Then, suddenly, I quit thinking and start listening. The sound is pecking away at my ears. A faint sound, but it keeps up. Then it registers. I whirl around. It's coming from across the room, the table, the bowl of fruit. I grab the bowl, run to the window, open it, and then I heave it out in the garden below. The concussion knocks me back. I can hear a couple of windows breaking. I run downstairs to the lobby. The clerk is waving his hands in the air. What happened? That explosion. That explosion was meant for me. A little thin-faced man scooted out of here a minute ago. Yes, he took a taxi. Oh. Is this hotel the driver's regular stand? Why, yes, it is. Look, I've got to meet a guy at the Sphinx Club in a few minutes. When that cab driver returns, send him over there. Ah, welcome to my humble Sphinx Club, sir. You are just in time for the entertainment. I am looking for a guy named Mekon. Ladies and gentlemen, Mitchell, special over here. Ah. Hello, Mekon. Please sit down. Thanks. I almost didn't make it tonight. Looks like Ahmed planted a bomb in my room. What? What, Mitchell? Did... Look, you found out anything yet? Only that the sheik is no longer in his houseboat. That doesn't do us much good. Huh? Hey, uh, who's that guy out there talking about Hollywood? His name is Eddie Martell, a very clever entertainer. Listen to him, I think you will find him amusing. I'd like to give you my humble impression of a few American movie stars, so let's see if you can recognize him. Now, uh, can I have your attention, please? All of you at the back of the room there? All right. Now, how about this impression? Now, listen, baby. I don't want to have any trouble with you. We do it my way or we don't do it at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, he's really not bad. He tonight. seems yeah. to be very popular yeah, yeah, here. That's right. Let's try this one now. Yeah. No, see here. You can't talk like that to a man of the old side, you know. I won't stand for it. You hear? I won't stand for it. Barry Morrison's Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're really boxies tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's, here's one more. All right, try to catch this one now. If I were king, Olive, if I were king, what treasures I would bring? Van Johnson! Van Johnson? Oh, who, who, who was it? Who was it said Van Johnson? All right, waiter, t t take that man on his table and put him on the Nile, will you? <laughs> well, well I, I think that's about all for now. Thank you, thank you very much. I'll be back for the midnight show with more of them, and I'll see you later. Huh? Well... Looks like he's heading for our table. Hi, chum. You know, I can spot an American a mile away, and I always have to stop and say, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> have a seat. Thanks. Eddie Martell's the name. Steve Mitchell. This is Mikan. Hi. Allow me to compliment you on your act, Mr. Martell. Yeah, it's pretty good. Ah, it's just a knack. If you got it, you can impersonate almost anybody. Now, uh, take you, for instance, Mr. Mitchell. I haven't heard much of your voice, but... Uh... I think this might sound something like it, huh? Is that close? <laughs> Not bad. Mitchell Effendi. Steve Mitchell. Over here. There is a telephone call for you. For me? Are you sure? Yes, sir. If you will come with me. Okay. Excuse me, I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, sure. Of course. Where is the phone? In the back room. Mitchell Effendi, a cab driver came in here a minute ago. He said you wanted to see him. Oh, yeah, I do. Ah, here we are. 
There is the phone over on the table. I will send the cab driver back when you are through with your call. Okay, thanks. Hello? Good evening, Steve Mitchell. Sheikh Haroon. Hey, where are you? Here in Cairo. Look, I've been trying to see you. I know. I have been kept informed as to your movements. That mining agreement expired. I am well aware of that, but I have no intention of renewing it. I intend to make other arrangements. Look, won't you at least let me talk to you about it? It will do no good, Mitchell. And let me advise you for the last time to let the matter drop. If you do not, if you persist in interfering, then I cannot be responsible for the consequences. Look, forget that I once saved your life. Just remember, I taught you to play poker. Now at least you owe me a chance to talk. Goodbye, Mitchell. Later tonight, I'm returning to my walled city. Wait a minute. Oh, great. Mr. Mitchell, sir? Huh? Oh, uh, are you the cab driver? Yes, sir. The hotel Hmm. clerk said you wished to see me. Yeah. You picked up a little thin-faced guy named Ahmed in front of the hotel about an hour ago. Where'd you take him? I have written the address on this piece of paper, sir. Oh, thanks. Here, uh... This is for your trouble. Thank you, yeah, sir. After I Thank close you. here, I'll Thank be you. heading for the States again, I guess. I imagine it will seem good to get back home. Oh, Mitchell. Hey, uh, Martell. Huh? How'd you like to make a few extra bucks? You kidding? <laughs> is it honest? And who cares? I think I might have a little job for you in a few minutes. Yeah, okay. See you in my dressing room, okay? That's a deal. What is this all about, Mitchell? Look, Mikan, that phone call just now was from the Sheik. What? Where is he? Somewhere in Cairo, but he's leaving for his walled city. That means we've got to act tonight. But I still do not understand what you wish with this Eddie Martell. Look, he's an impersonator. He could imitate my voice on the phone. Imitate your voice? That's right. I want Martell to call Ahmed, make believe he's me, and tell Ahmed I know he planted that bomb and I'm on my way over to settle things with him. But what will that accomplish? Well, I'm going to be right across the street from Ahmed's place when he gets that call. If he's working under the sheik's orders, he'll probably get panicky and run to the sheik. I'll follow him. If he's working for somebody else, he'll probably run there. I'll still follow him. I see. Well, I hope it works. In the meantime, Mitchell, I will continue my efforts to see the sheik. Okay. If you do locate him, tell him I know I'm trying to fill an inside straight, but I think he owes me at least a chance to draw to it. I do not think I understand your message, Mitchell. Maybe not, but I think the sheik will. Well, I'll see you later, Mekon. So I make the deal with Eddie Martell to call Ahmed at nine. I pay the guy across the street five bucks to let me roost on his roof. It's a good spot. I can look right into Ahmed's room. At five to nine, a girl comes in. She's wearing a red dancing skirt. She and Ahmed seem to be talking about something pretty important. Nine o'clock comes. Nine fifteen. Still no phone call. I wait until 9.30, and by then I'm sure something has gone wrong with my plan. I go back to the Sphinx Club and head for Eddie Martell's dressing room. There's a man standing in front of the door. What do you want? I want to see Eddie Martell. Why? Who are you? Steve Mitchell. Now, look, if it's okay with you, I want to see Eddie Martell. Is he in the dressing room? Yes. And it is quite all right with me if you wish to see him, Mr. Mitchell. There he is. Oh, brother. Not a very pretty sight, is it? Well, I guess he won't be impersonating anybody from now on. Now, please tell me why you wish to see Eddie Martell. What is it to you? Oh, allow me. I am Lieutenant Abura of the Cairo Police. Well, Lieutenant, as long as we're laying credentials on the table, here are mine. I see. Why are you in Cairo, Mr. Mitchell? I've been trying to see Sheikh Haroon. You think the sheik is involved in this killing? It looks like it. His boy, Ahmed, planted a bomb in my room. I see. Uh, Mitchell, you are aware of Sheik Haroon's power. Are you prepared to confront him with an accusation? No. I'm just trying to confront him, period. Without more evidence, I I cannot help you. All right. I think I know where I can get the evidence. The hard way. The sheik's secretary, Ahmed. (sighs) Come, then. Let us pay him a visit. Really hot tonight, Lieutenant. Yes, and the air is quite still. These weather conditions usually signify the start of the come scene. Come scene? What's that? 
A blinding sandstone from the Sahara. Oh, oh, fine. That's about all I need right now, a nice sandstorm. Well, here we are. This is Ahmed's rooming house. His room is right here in front. Uh, Mitchell, we will enter without knocking. I suggest you be prepared for anything. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Look. There on the floor. Yes. This is Ahmed. It was Ahmed before he collected that slug. Well, Lieutenant, now do we see the sheik? Yes. Where is he? Somewhere in Cairo. Mikan may be able to help us. Mikan? Yeah, he was the sheik's second in command. He's checking some places the sheik might be here in town. Hey, wait a minute. There's one other. Who is that? The dancing girl in the red skirt who came to see Ahmed while I was watching his room. I've got to find her. Uh, Mitchell, uh, do you realize how many dancing girls there are in Cairo? Uh, sure. They like trying to find one tree in a forest, I suppose. But it's all I've got to go on right now. Oh, well, I'll check with you later, Lieutenant. For the next three hours, I cover every cafe, bar, and dive I can find. I see a lot of dancing girls, all shapes and sizes. Quite a few are wearing red skirts, but none of them is the one I'm looking for. The sandstorm has started by now, and it's really a beaut. Ah, fine, I give up and head back to my hotel room. I open the door, and there is the person I'd just been turning Cairo upside down to find, the girl in the red dancing skirt. The gun looked very businesslike, but she was trembling. Close the door, Mitchell. Okay. So, I'm next. First Ahmed, now me. I was Ahmed's sweetheart. You took a pretty funny way of showing it. I did not kill Ahmed. You did. I'd... Hey, look. This is a neat cover-up, if it works. I saw you go to his room a little earlier this evening. He was alive when I left. What makes you think I killed him? I knew he was trying to see you. I thought he was trying... They did not put any bomb in your room. He wanted to tell you that the sheik was gone. The sheik is gone? But what did he... Hold it. What? The picture on the wall behind you is moving. Hey, a gun barrel. Get down! <laughs> the slugs tear into the rug beside us. I dive out into the hall and head for the next room. The door's locked. By the time I batter it down, the room's empty. I hear someone pounding down the fire escape. I stick my head out the window in the wind promptly blows a cupful of sand into each eye. Can't even open them for a minute, let alone see who the sniper is. I go back to my own room. The girl is gone. Oh, now I'm right back where I started from with a handful of nothing. I call Lieutenant Abura. He and his boys give the room next door a thorough going over. I'm waiting for him in his office when he finishes. Mitchell, I thought you said the sheep was a friend of yours. I did. Why? We went over the hotel room next to yours very thoroughly, uh, the one from which you were shot at. Mm -hmm. There were several cigarette butts and a half-empty glass of water. So the sniper had been waiting there for me. (laughs) Well, what's that got to do with the sheik? The fingerprints on that glass were his. What? Are you sure? Of course I am sure. Several years ago, during a political uprising, the sheik was a guest of ours, uh, temporarily. We got his fingerprints then. They matched the ones on the glass. Mm. Well, after this, I'll pick my friends more carefully. Uh, Mitchell, I will tell you frankly, I I do not know quite what to do about this. Even though the sheik's fingerprints are on that glass, it would be a very delicate and dangerous thing to go out to his walled city and uh, formally accuse him of an attempt on your life. His tribesmen are fanatically loyal to him. Uh, Excuse Uh, me. Sure. Uh, Lieutenant Abura speaking. Hmm? What? Oh, just a minute. It is for you, Mitchell. Oh. Hello. This is Mikan, Mitchell. I've been trying to get in touch with you. Yeah? They told me at your hotel that you were at police headquarters. Anything new? I covered all the places I thought the sheik might be. About two hours ago, I saw him come out of one of them. Did you get a chance to talk to him? Only as he was getting in his car to return to his city. He would not listen to me. He said your mission was hopeless. Hmm. What did he say when you gave him my message about drawing to an inside straight? Nothing. I'm afraid he did not understand it. I see. Well, thanks for the try, Mikan. Lieutenant, I just had a thought. Hmm? I know it's a tough proposition to get into that walled city if you're not welcome, but what happens in a sandstorm like this? Why, during the come scene, everyone remains indoors under cover. Only a fool would venture out into it. That's what I mean. 
Let you and me be a couple of fools. Oh, but Mitchell... How could we get there? Uh, why, the jeep, I, I suppose. Could you dig up some goggles? Uh, yes, I suppose so, but look... Look, you know, I think I understand now what Ahmed was talking about. It seems like a wild guess, but it's the only answer that makes sense. But to make sure, we're going to have to pay a visit to the Sheik in his walled city. <laughs> Just ahead, Mitchell. Yeah. Come on. I hate to think of what this sand would be doing to our eyes if we didn't have these goggles. So do I. Uh, well, the gate is closed. There's no sentry on duty. Feels you are right about the sandstorm, Mitchell. The city may be unguarded. Yeah, come on. Let's find a place to climb this wall. It's too high to jump. About 12 feet. Mitchell, there are many things about this that I do not understand. Me too. But I think it's beginning to fall into place. Hey, wait. There are a few missing rocks in the wall here. Maybe I can get enough for a handhold. I'll give it a try. Mitchell, be careful. If a guard sees you on the wall, he will shoot instantly. Yeah, I know. Here's another hole. Can you reach the top with your hand? Yeah. I got a hold of it now. As soon as I pull myself up, I'll give you a hand. Hey, I got a hold. Yes. Can you reach my hand? Here you go. Oh, thank you. Okay. We'll drop down just inside the wall here. I'll go first. Come ahead. Very well. Uh, yeah, this wall shelters us from the wind a little. Yeah. Now, look. There's a secret entrance to the sheik's chambers. He showed it to me when I was here five years ago. Uh, where is it? Right around the corner of that building over there, I think. Now, we'll be crossing about 20 feet of open space, but we've got to take a chance. You ready? Yes. Let's go. Mitchell, we have been seen. Yeah. Get behind the corner of the building here. Come on. Here we are. Now, you press one of these rocks, and it's supposed to open the door. Hurry, Mitchell, hurry. I've got it. Quick. Get inside. Okay, pull the door shut behind you. Uh, I, I cannot see a thing. Turn on your flashlight. Good. Now, up this flight of stairs. Uh, this leads to the sheik's chambers? Yeah. That guard who saw us, he will... We're taking a chance that he doesn't know about that secret entrance. Okay. This door takes us right into the sheik's room. Now, get ready for anything, Lieutenant. The room is empty. No, I don't think it is. Mikan should be here. You are very clever, Mitchell. M Stand M quite still, both of you. Hello, Mikan. You're a very persistent man, Mitchell. Not quite as persistent as you are, I guess. How did you know? If you'd known anything about poker, I might never have caught on. But when you told me the sheik didn't understand my message about drawing to an inside straight... That does not matter now, all Mitchell. It fell into place after that. But, Mitchell, where is the sheik? I think I know that, too. But he talked to you at the Sphinx Club. No, that was the impersonator, Eddie Martell. <laughs> I thought I was going to use him, but Mikan beat me to it. But the sheik's fingerprints in the hotel room. I guess it wasn't too hard to place a glass with those fingerprints there. Huh, Mikan? You're wasting time. The point is, both of you know too much to live. I... The porter, keep your hands inside. Watch out, Lieutenant. I warned you! <laughs> Abora crashes into the table and knocks the lamp to the floor. The room is in darkness now. And now, Mitchell, I have a different fate in store for you. I can't just in time. I knew about the trap door and the pit full of lime the sheik had shown them to me once. So, you escaped the pit, but you cannot get out of this room. Why don't you call for help, Mikan? Or maybe you don't want any of the tribe to know what's in that pit. You are quite right, Mitchell. This is a matter to be settled between the two of us. I start circling in the dark. I know Mikan's across the pit, but he doesn't know which side I'm on. Then a finger of light stabs at him from the floor. Abura was still alive. And it turned on his flashlight. Mikan shoots out the light. But in the second it is on, I'd located him. He is standing on the other side of the pit with his back to it. That's the one direction he isn't expecting me to come from. 
The pit's about ten feet across, but I know it's my only chance. I get a running start and dive across the pit at Mekon. Me too. Ah, lost your gun, huh? I do not need it. There's enough strength in my arm. What are you doing? Just a hammerlock, buddy. Now we'll see how you like the pit. No, Mitchell, the pit. No, no. Please, Mitchell, do not drop me. Don't worry, Mikan. I've got a hold of you by one hand. I want to keep you nice and alive. Do, 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 do not let go of me. Do, do not let go. Mitchell. Yeah, Lieutenant. Breaking down the door. Good. Quickly! It is a guard. Keep him covered for a minute, Lieutenant. Yes. Stand back, both of you. What is the matter? Guard! Guard, get me out of here! If he takes one step towards me, I'll drop you, Mikan. No, 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 God! Stay where you are. Me, Mitchell, I, I'm slipping. You'll slip more than that if I let go of your arm. <laughs> Hang on to me! Sure, sure. Just tell these guards what you did with the sheik. No, no, God! Do not listen to him. Pull me out! Okay, Mikan. I'll just let go of you and then. No, 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 no. Go on, open up, spill it. What is this about the sheik? You told us he was ill, Mikan. Start talking or you'll be right down there with him. I, I, the, the sheik is dead. Dead? Keep talking. I, I, I killed him. What? Okay, guard, help me pull him out. You got all of them? Yes. Here we go. <laughs> God, God, listen to me. It was not the truth. What I just said, I, I did He's not... He's all listen. yours, guard. And if you'll check the bottom of that pit, I think you'll find what's left of the sheik. No, no. Come, Mika, let me go. You shall help me with him. I tell you, it's not true. I only said that How are you doing, Lieutenant? Oh, I will be all right. It is a shoulder wound. Good. And you? Oh, I'm okay, except my right arm feels about three inches longer than my left. <laughs> uh, Mitchell... Why did Mikan kill the sheik? He knew the sheik was going to renew our mining agreement. But Mikan had sold out to the other interests, so he ah. killed the sheik. But this business of making it look like the sheik was still alive. Sure, until after the mining agreement had been signed with the boys who were paying Mikan off. And he could announce that the sheik had met with an accident, and as second in command, Mikan would take over the tribe. What will happen now? Well, when the sheik's boys find out that Mikan killed their leader. In order to change that agreement, I think they could be talked into preserving the status quo. You know, that's funny. What is? Well, you've heard the old saying, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. How do you mean? Well, Mikan knew more about poker than he realized. He knew how to bluff, and that's a large part of the game. But if you're going to play a game, you better know all about it. Mikan should have known what an inside straight was. I see. Uh, just what is an inside straight? Huh? You mean you don't know anything about poker either? No, not a thing. Ah, that's very interesting. Come on. You start the school as soon as we get back to Cairo. It may be that I've found me a pigeon. Pigeon? Uh, that's an American term meaning, well, I think I'll let you find out what it means soon enough. Come on. Very well. Uh, we will play your game, but just one favor. Sure, anything. Dealer's choice deuces wild, my deck, and no limit. Oh, great. My pigeon has turned into a buzzard. You have just heard another episode in the exciting new adventure series, Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Dangerous Assignment is written by Bob Reif, with music by Bruce Ashley, and is directed by Bill Karn. Be with us again next week at this time, when Brian Donlevy, starring as Steve Mitchell, will embark on another Dangerous Assignment. <laughs> Throughout the week, NBC brings you unparalleled drama in action-packed mystery adventure programs. Tomorrow, hear Big Town with crusading editor Steve Wilson fighting crime and viciousness. On Wednesday, listen to the champion of the people, Mr. District Attorney, in a fast-moving 30 minutes of action drama and big story with a true tale from the front pages of America's newspapers.
Richard Widmark is a merchant seaman on Cavalcade, tomorrow on NBC. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.